I don't think I've ever had a new Mac or PC or any product in for review and thought, how the hell am I gonna use this until now with this. This is a top spec Mac Studio. We're talking M3 Ultra, that's a 32 core CPU, 80 core GPU, and a ludicrous 512 gigabytes of their unified memory. That's more memory, more RAM, than most laptops have in terms of storage. And speaking of which, we have eight terabytes in here. Technically, you can get with 16 terabytes. But other than that, this is a top spec maxed out Mac Studio, and it is very fast. So over the past month or so, I've been trying to figure out who should actually buy this, or are you better off with the much cheaper M4 Max version, or perhaps a MacBook Pro laptop, or even a Mac Mini, either top spec versions of all of these, or maybe even last year's Mac Studio with an M2 Ultra, which I also have on test. I could probably open an Apple store at this point. That's what I'm gonna answer in this video. And if you do find it useful, then a cheeky like and subscribe would be fantastic. Make sure you ding that bell as well, all those annoying YouTuber cliches, because it does make a difference and it means that you'll always see when I post a new video. Let's dive in. The Mac Studio is the ultimate desktop Mac for power users, at least until the desktop Mac Pro gets a refresh, although more on that later. It starts from a little over two grand, then goes up to a little over 14, but I'm sure you can put that on the company credit card and no one will mind. And on paper, this M3 Ultra SKU of the Mac Studio is the fastest Mac ever, especially for 3D modeling and rendering, compiling code, editing multiple 4K or 8K video streams, or indeed training large AI models locally. So the new Mac Studio comes with either an M4 Max or M3 Ultra, both of which have a base and high spec version with extra CPU and GPU cores. And it is a bit confusing because while the M4 series is a newer architecture and you can get it in the Mac Mini and the Mac Book Pro laptop, there's too many Macs. The M3 is using previous generation architecture, but because the Ultra is essentially two Maxes fused together, we end up with more cores, more raw horsepower, and also extra encoders and decoders, and we'll brick all that down in a second. So we're in this kind of weird halfway transition between old architecture, but more powerful, and new, more efficient, smarter architecture, but fewer cores. To give you an idea, versus the M4 Max, the M3 Ultra gets double the CPU, GPU, and neural cores, double the memory bandwidth, two and a half times the RAM of the base model, and also higher 256 and 512 gig memory options, which by the way, is the most memory ever on a Mac device. The previous Mac Studio topped out at 192 gigs, the MacBook Pro laptop tops out at 128, I think. So yeah, this is in a league of its own in terms of memory. It also gets two video decode and four video encode engines, plus four ProRes encode and decode engines, again, double what the M4 Max gets, which makes editing multiple 4K and 8K video streams and exporting much faster. The M3 Ultra version also gives us Thunderbolt 5 ports both at the back and the front, also that 16 gig of storage option, up to the 512 memory, uh, and also a beefier heatsink. But both models support hardware ray tracing and, of course, Apple intelligence. I'm sure that's the reason you're gonna buy one of these. The only trouble is the M3 Ultra starts at about twice the price as the M4 Max. 2100 versus 4200 here in the UK. However, you are getting 96 gigs of memory as standard versus 36. You're getting a terabyte of storage versus 512. You're getting the extra connectivity and also the better uh, heatsink. So once you start adding those options to the M4 Max, the difference in the pricing isn't as significant. Still, you are going to be paying up to uh, 14,300 pounds for a top spec M3 Mac Studio, which is an awful lot of money, especially as this doesn't have Wi-Fi 7, which is a bit frustrating. You do have 6E, which is fine, and also a 10 gig ethernet port at the back. And also, obviously, being a Mac, you can't upgrade it. So whatever you buy with out of the box, out of the store, out of the gate, you're stuck with this, which might be a bit painful if they do end up coming out with M4 Ultra or an M5 series chip in the next sort of six or 12 months. Uh, what I would do though is save a whole bunch of money, let's say drop that 16 terabytes of storage down to maybe two, say four grand, and just plug in a fast Thunderbolt 4 or 5 external SSD. That's a much more cost efficient way to get storage with this. As for the design, well, it's identical to the last gen studio with the M2 Ultra, with this lovely sleek aluminium shell, great range of ports, and also a basic built-in speaker, which comes in handy if you've got nothing else. It is a lot bigger than the Mac Mini though, uh, which I think actually may be my favorite product of 2024. I absolutely love this thing. The amount of power you can get, uh, the value, especially at the lower end with the regular M4 chip, but this is the highest spec M4 Pro. And you can literally take this in a backpack. You can also take this in a backpack, but I absolutely adore the Mac Mini. And if this is, say, a cheeseburger, you can probably see where I'm going with this, 
then this is obviously the Big Mac. So it's a lot bigger, but that's mostly down to the much better cooling. The M3 Ultra version gets beefier copper heat pipes versus the studio with the M4 Max's aluminium ones, and it's just as well because they've upped the peak power limit to 480 watts, up from the M2 Ultra's 370 watts. Round the back, we get the power button, four Thunderbolt 5s, two USB 3 Type A's, an HDMI 2.1, a 10 gigabit ethernet port, and an audio jack. Plus at the front, we have a full-size UHS-2 card reader, very helpful for me as a video creator, producer person. And also while on the M4 Max version, these two are just USB-Cs, great for plugging in peripherals like mouse and keyboard or smaller things that don't need fast data rates. On the M3 Ultra, uh, these are also Thunderbolt 5, which means in total, this will support up to eight 6K 60 hertz displays or four displays at 4K 240 uh, or 8K 60. Now here I have the ROG 32 something, 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 something. It's a beautiful 4K OLED 240 hertz display and via HDMI, uh, I've got this hooked up and I'm getting that lovely smooth 240 hertz refresh rate. By display port, you're limited to 120. And actually this is a really nice option for both working and gaming. This is one of my favorite monitors of all time actually. I do love Apple's displays, the studio display, the pro display, XDR, but I think the Pro Display XDR is like five years old now. 60 Hertz feels sluggish. Fingers crossed at WWDC or at some point this year, they take advantage of these new Thunderbolt 5 ports, which are on the Mac Mini, Mac Studio, MacBook Pro, and they refresh the monitors. I would love a new Pro Display XDR with 120 Hertz refresh. But I digress. Mac Studio, tons of connectivity and plenty of bandwidth for hubs and extra storage. So what's this thing like to use? Well, as you can probably imagine, it is very fast. Scrubbing through multiple 4K video streams in DaVinci Studio is battery smooth and playback is seamless, although things do get a little bit choppier with four 8K60 Canon RAW streams, fair enough, and shout out to Jonathan Casey for sharing these video samples with me. And rendering and panning around in Blender with ray tracing is all really smooth and the renders are super quick. And maybe even more impressively than the raw performance of this is how cool and quiet and relatively low power uh, the Mac Studio is, even under load with everything going on and I can throw at it, you can barely hear the fan, which is a very different story to my MacBook Pro and also my desktop PC. Okay, are you ready? We're about to get nerdy. Let's talk numbers. How fast is this thing? Well, for context, I'm putting up against my top spec studio with the M2 Ultra from last year, a top spec Mac Mini with the M4 Pro, and a top spec MacBook Pro 16 with M4 Max as a sort of stand in for the studio M4 Max, which, according to Ars Technica, perform about the same. And I'm also curious to know if a laptop is actually really all I need. And in Geekbench 6's GPU test, the M3 Ultra scored almost 40% higher than the M4 Max, 13% more than the M2 Ultra Studio, and a whopping 2.3 times higher than the Mini M4 Pro. In CPU multi-core, the M3 Ultra was just 9% faster than the M4 Max, and 28% faster than the M2 Ultra and M4 Pro, which were almost identical. But in single core, the M4 Max with its newer architecture was significantly faster. And even the Mini with the M4 Pro was 18% quicker. But then in Cinebench's GPU test, the M3 Ultra is twice as fast as the M2 Ultra. I've also run these tests like two or three times just to make sure because that is nuts. Although it's only 20% quicker over the M4 Max. In the multi-core CPU test, the M4 Max and the M2 Ultra are almost tied, but the M3 Ultra scored 50% higher and nearly doubled the M4 Pro in the Mini. In single core though, both M4s are a good deal quicker. Now in my Blender test, the M3 Ultra rendered 500 frames 30% faster than the M4 Max and the M2 Ultra, and in less than half the time the Mini with the M4 Pro did. Firing up a bit of Lightroom, and with my 500 RAW photos to JPEG export test, the M3 Ultra was the quickest, but the M4 Max is pretty close behind. And it's the M4 Pro here that falls behind a little bit. In Premiere Pro, which is what I use, I have a 10 minute 8K export test, and the M3 Ultra here was actually 3% slower than the M4 Max. And amazingly, the Mini M4 Pro was only a few seconds behind. Premiere Pro really doesn't utilize the M3 Ultra very well. Perhaps it's time that I jump to Final Cut or DaVinci. Because then, in the Puget Bench Creator Mixed Use Tests, the M3 Ultra came out in front, followed by the M2 Ultra in DaVinci Studio, mostly thanks to those extra GPU cores. But in the Premiere Pro and Photoshop Extended Tests, the M4 Max, with its sky-high single-core performance, is out in front of the M3 Ultra. Even the Mini with the M4 Pro overtakes the M3 Ultra in Photoshop. For you developers, in the Xcode benchmark, the M3 Ultra was 16% quicker to finish than the M4 Max, 23% faster than the M2 Ultra Studio, and 31% faster than the Mini. 
It's not the night and day difference maybe I would have hoped for, but in terms of developing and codebase compiling, this is one of the M3 Ultra's strong suits. In contrast, in Geekbench AI, and despite having half the neural cores, the M4 Max and M4 Pro's newer neural engine here was way out ahead. The M3 Ultra definitely feels like a generation behind here. And lastly, I would feel bad if I didn't include at least one game, not that you're probably gonna buy those for gaming, but in the just released Assassin's Creed Shadows, running at 4K with high settings and performance upscaling, while the M3 Ultra was the fastest, it wasn't that far ahead of the rest. But what makes this new Mac Studio really stand out, and kind of one of the headlines everyone's talking about, is the fact that you can spec it with up to that 512 gigs of unified memory. Nothing else has that option. But what's the point? It's probably not worth spending thousands and thousands just so you can have more Chrome tabs running at the same time. Well, if you're working with huge data sets or enormous CAD assemblies, or you want to train larger LLMs locally, then more memory lets you work with more data at once. In fact, for LLMs, the more memory the better, as that allows you to run on much larger LLMs, which offer bigger training databases and therefore should give you better results and smarter answers. 512 gigs of memory, so long as you up the VRAM allocation in Mac OS, allows you to run even the biggest 671B models with 4-bit quantization, like the DeepSeek R1 model, which needs around 450 gigs to even load. And my buddy Dave2D did this on his M3 Ultra, and for context, you'd need 13 or 14 PCs with RTX 5090s with their 32 gigs of VRAM to run this, although that would be faster. But the Mac Studio does this while using just 150, 180 watts of power. Now I ran some smaller LLMs locally, asking a series of questions, where the time to answer measured it in tokens per second. And while the M3 Ultra is faster across the board, it's a lot faster than the M4s with the larger 32B and 70B models. So where the M3 Ultra in this guy really stands out is multi-core, is GPU performance, and also having that crazy option for stupid amounts of memory and storage. Uh, but what about going with a regular PC with a 5090? Wouldn't a high-end discrete GPU be a better option? And just for my own curiosity, I ran a couple of tests. And in actual real-life workloads, these are pretty evenly matched for Blender render times and in my DaVinci Resolve benchmark, which just goes to show what an incredible amount of power the M3 Ultra Studio has, especially given its size and lower power requirements. So what do we think? Are you gonna buy one of these? It's tricky because the M3 Ultra is extremely capable, and for some specific workloads, particularly with AI or uh, you know CAD rendering, maybe some developers, if you've got the budget, yeah, this is gonna be a great option. But it's also awkward that we are in this sort of transition period between an M4, M3, and maybe even M5 soon. Obviously, with tech, there's always something around the corner. And if you're buying this to increase your productivity as a you know a company investment, you're gonna make money with it now. Then you know, sure, go for it. You can always wait for something else. But it is slower in some tests, in some single core performance, in some neural engine performance. And this really only comes into its own with those super high SKUs that cost an absolute fortune. And I think if I was gonna buy these, I would get the M4 Max and then maybe uh, opt the memory to maybe 96 gigs and plug in an external SSD. It's a good problem to have when these new devices are just so powerful that you're like, what am I even gonna do with this? Because it means you can either spend less money going for a lower end SKU or even maybe an older generation of it. But between a Mac Mini, a Mac Studio and a MacBook Pro, which would you go for? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.